Emiliano Kaplar. Uh, originally, I'm from Albania, so we left during the civil war in Albania. It was an interesting time, it was an interesting journey, you know, I was quite young as well, around 10, but, you know, not young enough to forget, old enough to remember, but I'm, I'm kind of, you know, grateful I had that experience as well. I don't know where I would be if I was still in Albania, um, but, you know, that experience, you know, as you can imagine, you learned a lot of values growing up in a different country with different kind of uh, um, uh, values um, that my country has. And, and my parents trying to maintain those values, I think, pushed me to um, not where I am now, but the kind of principles I have. Um, because my, I'm pretty sure my parents didn't have want me to become a barista full time, you know. Uh, they wanted me to become a doctor. Uh, close enough, I was a scientist. And I am the owner of Unfiltered Coffee. Say I started my coffee journey in 2010. So this is when I started to go to college um, to get my bachelor's degree in science. Um, so I was working part time in, in a cafe. So it was my first kind of like coffee job introduction. It was nothing to do with speciality. It was more kind of like commodity coffee. But in that place, I gained a lot of uh, skills in terms of kind of espresso work, um, milk texturing. But before, like we always had a coffee culture from our country in Albania. So it was very uh, dominant in kind of, let's say, if you, if you, get, if you would know uh, a thing called Jevze or Turkish coffee. Um, but in Ireland, they would like more kind of espresso-based drinks. I left the country to go to Japan. Uh, so while in Japan, I worked there for one year with, with many, many talented people. And I would say like in Japan is where I truly developed the love for, for speciality and the craft of uh, making coffee. So in here especially we work with a lot of uh, water compositions as well, kind of understanding the, the aspects of uh, uh, compounds in coffee as well. and. Uh, Expectual extractions as well, uh, water manipulation. So this is what I would do in laboratories, but bringing it to coffees definitely helped me kind of enhance or improve uh, my craft uh, in making coffee. So relating to science is definitely, I think one of the biggest kind of combinations that I could have. So it's a very valued skill. So all the guys here, they have different backgrounds. I have architects, engineers uh, working in science, but directly coming from the coffee industry, I don't think I would ever hire them. So I need everybody to have a different creative background because that will kind of bring in a lot of kind of innovation into the coffee scene and push it forward. Whereas the people that are coming straight out of the coffee industry, I feel like they're too much blinded um, and they already have a different aspect or different thinking to bring in and change or evolve the coffee scene. So I like to work with people who are you know, different backgrounds and different different cultures as well. So it, it helps to innovate coffee.
like wine? Yes. Okay, very good. So this bad boy, I want you to take your first sip when this cup goes to 55 degrees. On that first sip, you're gonna get guava, mm -hmm. you're gonna get lychee. Mm -hmm. In the middle of your palate, you're gonna get papaya. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get a little bit of um, mangosteen, mm -hmm. uh, banana, and finishing off with a really beautiful, nice red grape sweetness. So this coffee has a lot of citric and lactic acidity, okay? So which means that in the beginning, it's gonna be very velvety for you, bye-bye. It's gonna be very velvety texture. As this coffee cools to about 40 degrees is when that coffee will open up at its most, okay? So those volatile acids will come through a lot more. So what you're gonna notice as it cools down to 40 degrees, you're gonna see a few perception changes from the cup. One of them is gonna be sweetness. So naturally as the coffee cools down, sweetness will intensify and it's gonna be a longer lasting aftertaste uh, of, of beautiful sweet red grapes, okay? So this has to do mainly with yourself than the coffee. So your palate, your receptors for sweetness, activate better at lower temperatures. Mm -hmm. So naturally as things cool down, you have a better feel of what sweetness is and your perception of it is gonna be intensified, okay? The next is gonna be lactic acidity. Now, this is gonna be the coffee. So you're gonna have a creamy banana, a beautiful kind of creamy as well, uh, mm -hmm. a papaya, almost buttery, and you're gonna have really nice kind of lychee uh, candy. And in the back end, you're gonna have a jammy um, um, red grape to it, okay? Sounds good. Your sensory is a very personal thing, you know? So I would never kind of uh, use terms to be like, this is 100% what you will get. And uh, this is what I get, you know? I'm Juliano from Albania. I've had this experience in my life. So you could be somebody from Poland who's never had mangoes. You know what I mean? How can I explain to you what mangoes are? You know what I mean? So for me, it's a very personal thing. So for me, it's more, this is kind of my perception of the coffee. And, but you know, you're welcome to add on what you feel as well. It's, it's perfectly okay. That's why you gotta let people know, like it's okay to not feel what I feel, but it's, it's what you perceive as well, you know? So uh, it's a beautiful kind of uh, concept. So from chefs is my biggest inspirations and in watching these guys work, I think for me it's, it's the most amazing uh, aspect of their job. How they work, what their ethos is, um, what their dedication is. Um, I don't really see it in my own industry, you know, for, for coffee it's more of a nine to five. Maybe sometimes I do some recipes after work. But for me here, taking inspiration from chefs, like last night I finished work at three o'clock, um, and it's it's you get it perfect or you don't open the next day. So it, it's kind of yeah, a lot of inspiration from from great chefs. Uh, Mark Pierre is one of them, crazy motherfucker, but he he earned his title, you know. Um, so yeah, chefs is my biggest inspiration. In 2010, uh, when I started my bachelor's, you know, my pay was 1050, you know. Came back to Ireland, it was still 1050. Do you know what I mean? As, as a career barista, it's not, you're not gonna get a mortgage, you know. If you have kids, it's a very daunting thing just to be a barista. So, you know, that's why we're kind of trying to push a little bit forward in the industry, that this could be a progressive uh, career path. Um, and that's why our main focus would be, and always would be, trying to bring the team and pay the team what they deserve, what, what they deserve in terms of the hours of quality that they put is first and foremost for me. So if, if everybody in the circle that I have, in the team I have, um, can make a proper living out of this, for me that's worth it. And because of that, our passion comes through the coffee, you know, because we're not focused on, you know, we don't have this or no, this is not in the budget. It doesn't matter, there is no budget. You know what I mean? Like we're doing what is our craft. And for me, you know, that's new baristas have to understand that. It's hard work, not easy, but you should never romanticize coffee. Treat it as, treat it like chefs. Treat it like as a proper career path. Treat it with passion, you know? Treat it with 
hard work, long hours. Treated us, you're gonna see a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but just don't give up. And if everything goes against you, fuck them, open your own place. But for me, like one of the the reasons why I keep still doing what I do, even after like four years of opening this business, is I'm addicted to that one moment. So, you know, I could be here starting working on a brew recipe at four, finish at nine, but I'm not finished until I know I can get 100% out of this coffee. And when I get that recipe with water manipulation, grind size, different aspects, different variables changed, make that recipe, take that first sip and then go, this is amazing. But that moment only for me lasts after doing this for 13, 14 years, like 10 seconds. And I can never, even if I make the same coffee again uh, with the same recipe and it came out exactly the same, I could never have that moment again of this is the shit. I did this, right? It's gone quickly. So how I can retrieve that moment selfishly is by you. So when I present this coffee to you and you have that moment as I did. So for me, I watch. When I watch people experience that moment of this is the shit, this is the best thing I've ever had, I can get a high of that. So this is why I continue to do what I do. Hours doesn't matter, overwork doesn't matter, burnout doesn't exist. Just to chase that, that feeling, and that's what I love. You know, I think that for me has not gone away. And, and, and watching people's faces or their experience when you had that experience as well, the first time you did that recipe, I think it's just a beautiful moment. And for me, like that's, that's for me, this is magic for watching people. It's just, you get like that, you relive that moment when you try that recipe, you know, over and over again in other people's feelings. Because, you know, after doing this for 13 years, you've had all the coffees. They all taste the same at some point. Like, you know, there's not a lot of huge varietal changes in profiles of coffees. There's not that many compounds. So, so you don't have, you know, you get quite fatigued and bored a little bit, right? But it doesn't matter because other people that come in and join that moment, it's their first time having this coffee, this variety. So when they feel that magic, you relive it again. And that's what gives you that high, that motivation to keep doing what you're doing. And that's fucking, that's amazing. Oh. <laughs>